briefly. This is a song about a broker. You know what a broker is? Who knows what a broker is? Prabhu? <laughs> someone who sells products on behalf of someone else. Yes. So Bhakti Rutaku, he's telling us, I am singing the news of great holy tidings. Lord Nithananda Prabhu himself has opened a marketplace of the holy name at, in Surabhi Kunj. Actually, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has a house in that area. Surabhi Kunj. So, Lord Nitananda is selling the pure holy name in that marketplace for the price of only one's faith. That is the only currency. No rupees. <laughs> and uh, Lord Nitananda is seeing, seeing all the devotees becoming attracted. He is selling them the holy name after bargaining with them. So, one of the Prabhupada wanted me to repeat the story of bargaining. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> Lord Nityananda, he is the original broker. <laughs> so, um, briefly, I repeat that story. <laughs> when I first went to India, it was 1977, Srila Prabhupada was there. It was the happiest time. It was the best of times. I, I, I had wanted to go to India, to Mayapur, several years before, when the devotees started going. Of course, Srila Prabhupada wanted to have a, a, a big presentation of the Western devotees, international devotees, in Mayapur. So he, he repeatedly requested that the, the temple presidents and the GBC should make, bring as many devotees as possible to Mayapur. He wanted to show them that the, the, um, the prediction of Bhaktivinoda Thakur was actually coming to pass. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had written that the day will come when the, the Vaishnavas from all over the world, Europe and America and other places, all chanting, Jai Sachinandan, Jai Sachinandan. So it was happening, and the Prophet wanted to have a large amount of devotees to come and go on Parikram and go to the holy places. Of in the place of Mahaprabhu's birth, etc. And so I had wanted to go as earlier, but it didn't happen until 1977. So when I arrived in Mayapur, you know, Prabhupada was already there. And uh, he was in good health, and every day. He would come, it was such a wonderful time. Every day he would come down. Well, there was a Gurukul, there, was a, there, there were Gurukul boys in my place. Mostly Bengali boys. Bengali boys. And they would gather at the foot, the, at the foot of the stairs. Proper was on the second floor. And they would begin doing kirtan, and that was like you would know it's time for him to come down and greet, and greet the deities and, and give a class. So every morning it was like that. They would gather there and start doing kirtan. The boys, and they were very sweet, nice kirtan. And Prabhupada would come and stand up and look down at them and smile. 
And then he'd come downstairs and he'd pat one or two of them on their heads. And they would lead him into the temple room. And this is the old temple room in Mayapur. And then Prabhupada would proceed to circumambulate the altar. And they had made such provision inside the temple. Like they'd go around and, and there was a bell in the back and Prabhupada would stop and ring the bell in time with the kirtan. And that him ringing the bell would just send everybody into ecstasy. <laughs> he enjoyed seeing the devotees dancing and chanting happily. Um, so, and then he would sit down and speak from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I used to think, there is nothing, this is as good as it gets. To be in Mayapur down, listening to Srila Prabhupada speak on Chaitanya Charitamrita. It was so, so nectarine. Anyway, the second day I was there, I, w I wanted to go purchase a madanga. So. <laughs> <laughs> So we, I went to by myself. I asked the devotees, "Where can I buy a madanga and how much will it cost?" And but the, in the devotees who were living there, they said it is not a fixed price. They said you'll have to negotiate. So I went on my own. I got a rickshaw. I took the boat across the Ganga. And took a rickshaw at the, on the other side on the banks and we were going to Navadri. I told the driver, it's Madanga. So he took me to one shop. <laughs> and I went inside and the man had, the, there was two men, they had, they had about 30 Madangas in the shop. You know, I'd never seen so many Madangas together. <laughs> but, it's, uh, you know, it's like a kid in a candy shop. <laughs> <laughs> I was very excited and happy. So I picked out one that I liked. You know, I played, hit it, and and then I asked the man how much it would was the cost, the price, and he said, "Oh, only 350 rupees." So I knew he was charging me too much, but I didn't know how much, how much, what was it too much? <laughs> I had no idea, I, I didn't know what it, what it should cost, but I, the, I knew he's, he's overcharging me. So I thought, I have to try to bring him down. So I said, I, I like this Madonna very much, but it's, it, I can't afford it, it's too much. So he, he said, okay, uh, I'll give it to you for 250 rupees. So I thought, wow, he's come down a whole hundred rupees. <laughs> <laughs> in in, uh, in a half a minute, this is amazing. But of course, I thought, if he can come down so much in half a minute, how much more can he go? <laughs> I, you know, and, and, and all the time I'm calculating in, in my mind the exchange rate. You know, in those days one American dollar would get you 50 rupees. So it doesn't sound like a lot of money. But still I want to know what is the real price. So I told him, oh, that is very kind of you. You know, you knocked off a hundred rupees, but I can't afford it, still. So he, he talked for a second and he says, okay, okay, I'll give it to you for two hundred rupees. So he took off another fifty rupees. And that sounds even better. But I, I, don't, I still don't feel that <laughs> this is the right price. So I said, uh, I really like it, you know, and I'm holding the drum all this time. It's around my neck, 
And I'm, I'm developing attachment. <laughs> you know? so, but I, 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 and I could afford what he was saying, but I want to know. So I said that I really like it. It's a beautiful drum, but I can't afford it. I'm sorry. So I took it off. I want it, but I'm acting like I, you know. So, so I took it off and I put it down. And I started walking towards the rickshaw. And the, he was, the rickshaw driver was waiting for me. And he was just observing the fun. So as I turned to walk, he, he, he grabbed my hand and he said, wait. He said, how much do you want to pay? <laughs> And I, I don't know, I cannot, he, he, he had me stumped because I don't know what to say. How much, he said, how much do I want to pay? And I don't know what, what's the price. So I thought for a second and I said, I, I, thought, I, I really don't know, but I, I'm going to go for broke. <laughs> you know, I'm going to try to say something, see what worst he can say is no. So I said, well, I can only afford 90 rupees. <laughs> when I said that, he erupted. He got really mad. I mean, I'm sure he was cursing me in Bengali. <laughs> and, he, and he kept telling me, you know, get out. Get out, get out. I said, take it easy, I'm going to go, it's all right. <laughs> so I go and I, I, I took two steps, I didn't even get in the rickshaw. And he came back and he grabbed my hand. He said, okay, okay, you, you take him. So I was so happy. It worked, I got him down tonight. <laughs> So I paid him the 90 rupees and I got in the rickshaw and I said, okay, take me to the Ghat. I crossed the Ganga and go back to my boat. And then when I got on the boat, there was one Bengali gentleman sitting on the boat with an umbrella, dressed in white khadi. And as we were halfway across the Ganga, he, he spoke English and he said to me, uh, he asked me, are you with this con? And I said, yes. Yeah. He said, which country are you are coming from? So, I said, America. I was born in Trinidad, which is an island very much like Mauritius. But I, I was joined in America. I was living in America. So he said, oh. And I guess he could tell the way I was holding the Raganga that, you know, I, I mean, I was really, I was in love. <laughs> you know, I was holding the Madanga and, you know, just appreciating the, the, you know, I wasn't playing it, but just holding it, and I, I was just ex appreciating the craftsmanship and everything. So then he, the gentleman said, you bought this Madanga in Navadri? And I said, yes. Yeah. And he said, do you mind telling me how much you paid for this Madonna? <laughs> so I was feeling so proud. <laughs> I, you know, I, I didn't mind telling. I said, no, I don't mind. I said, um, I only paid 90 rupees. <laughs> and he, he, he straightened up and he said, 90 rupees? There is no Madonna, there is no 90 rupees Madonna in Navajri. There's 30 rupees, 40 rupees, and 50 rupees. 30 rupees, 40 rupees, and 50 rupees only. No more. I burst out laughing. I just had to laugh because I thought, he still got me. And, uh, but that wasn't the end of the story. When I got back to the temple, I was walking down the hallways and there were some brahmacharis in the room, Westerners, 
Europeans, and they knew who I was. By that time, I somehow already developed some fame as a kirtan singer. So they they saw me passing with the Madonna, and they called me and they said, Agni Dev, please uh, come. And so I, I stepped into their room, and they had like five or six Madangas. And they had just purchased these Madangas in Abhidhi earlier in the morning. So they asked me, what do I think of them? Are they, are they good? So I said, yes, they're good. And I you know, tapped on them and I said, they, you know, they're good, they're good. And they said, uh, we got them real cheap. I said, oh, how much did you pay for them? <laughs> <laughs> the, and one of them said, oh, we only paid 500 rupees. <laughs> I, uh, and they asked me, uh, how much did you pay for yours? I didn't have the heart to tell them. So I, I just, you know, I, I told a white lie. I said it's something like that. And they, uh, so I knew even if I told them, and, and even if they went back to the Madonga Wallet, there was no... Uh, you, would, you cannot, they don't take it back. Once you give the money, that's it. All sales final. Yes. So it would just be you know, this, you know, a disturbance, a disruption. But uh, that was my first experience of purchasing something in, in India. <laughs> so.